Welcome to the IBM Podcast Network. Not bad. Not bad. Do you right? realize that last week you yeah. didn't do a song? I told you, you never know what was coming. Yeah, but so it's, okay. it has there, to happen. There might once. be a second one today. That could actually be the one for today, and the one I just did was the one for last week. Uh, well, you, you have Think to about that. have no, at no, least no, no, one no, no, in no. every episode. I make the rules of the Geek Fruit podcast. Of my singing, <laughs> okay. my stylings. Hi, Jishnu. Welcome to the Geek Fruit podcast with me, Tejas, and you, Jishnu. Hello. And uh, today is an interesting episode. Uh, last week we spoke about Black Mirror. This week we're gonna do the exact opposite. <laughs> well, we are talking about something you watch on your Black Mirrors, but I guess that's everything that we talk about, right? Uh, is on a Black Mirror. It's technically on a true. Black Mirror, which is it's why that true. that name is quite all encompassing. But today we're gonna talk about sex <laughs> uh, because it's an integral part of life, and then some. And most importantly, well, more specifically, yeah. Sex on camera. Sex on camera. And sex in... 3D. Sex <laughs> in, in virtual fiction. reality. In fiction, in augmented sex reality. Sex in IMAX? Have they done that? No, sex Max. They haven't, they haven't done, I don't think they've done that yet. No, I don't think they... Their, no, budgets, have sure. not, their budgets are pretty big, but I don't know if they're IMAX big. But, but Yeah, as in like, there was a sex scene in Deadpool, which was then an IMAX film, so technically, yes. I mean, does was that... Was scene shot in IMAX? I don't think so. No, Probably I don't think, no, it was all converted IMAX. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. So, so are you saying that mm-hmm. so far there's not been any movie that has had a sex scene in IMAX? This I don't is possible. Know. This might be possible. Because, and here's why, most movies which are going to get an IMAX release are movies that are definitely going to be seen by the widest audience, which is why right. they're getting to spend that kind of money. Yeah. And so, there's no R-rated film that has been made for IMAX yet, I guess. Really? Yeah. Because really? all horror films, even if they want to shoot in IMAX, they have to make it 18 plus, And that mm-hmm. means already uh, narrowing the budget. The other thing is that that's why all R-rated sit, films... I'd have to sit and think on that. Yeah. There it's because be something all R-rated. R-rated films, almost all, which are horror films, almost always have sex scenes in them. Because they've already got the certification for the gore and the horror. So mm-hmm. they say, you know what's going to make this even better? Is yeah. that we can also do a sex scene and let's do it. Right. That's why they always have sex scenes. And mostly it's when the... I mean, they're in the throes of passion. I won't even call it that, though. Yeah. But uh, that's when the guy will strike, or the you know the villain will say, "Yeah, it's always like it's always happened." It's a, it's a, de- yeah. I, I think though that now people use the IMAX moments. Like for a lot of films, they don't have IMAX cameras used the entire way through. They only have it for certain scenes. Like for example, with the upcoming Cap uh, Cap Three movie, yeah, Civil War. One of the few IMAX um, scenes that they have is right. the uh, big iconic uh, the f- airport fight. Yeah, that the airport has been scene, seen yeah. a whole bunch in the trailers. So I think they usually reserve IMAX for like action sequences or VFX heavy sequences. Yeah, I think, something yeah. with a lot of, lot of movement lo- happening. Because I feel like, unfortunately, even if it, a movie uh, or a show is R-rated, if you were to show a sex scene, even though you are showing something, you are hiding a lot. So you're actually yeah, not showing a lot no, of things. I mean, the real so that'd be kind of a waste if it's just IMAX and it's just a bunch of sheets. Yeah, you're yeah. just looking at beds. And, and like, like there happen awesome to be people IMAX. under, the, under yeah, the covers. Yeah. You know, that would be kind of like, why did you spend all this money to film this... Egyptian cotton thread. But that's why <laughs> because the IMAX can capture the real beauty of that fabric. And then help sell it. Yeah. That would be a great ad for sheets. Egyptian cotton? Yeah. yeah. If like Khaleesi was like boning on like hey, uh, Bed that's... Bath & Beyond linens. Right. They could make some serious money. Is, uh, is Game of Thrones shot on IMAX? No. Oh, it's not. It's for TV release. I mean, it's. But I mean, no, it's Game of Thrones. It's hardly anything. It'd be a waste of TV. money. The only thing it'd be a waste TV, of a lot of money. The only thing TV about Game of Thrones is that it's serialized. Yeah. And, and but otherwise, everything is about. It's a movie. It's like short movies that are. Yeah, kind of like but it's on. it's very expensive. It is an expensive movie. show. I mean, yeah. like I think they wisely would put more money into set design and props and costumes rather than like an IMAX camera, where in which the, the viewers can't. Experience it at its full Fair form. Enough. Yeah. So, if yeah. that means, if Sherlock, Sherlock, the the last one which came out, mm-hmm. the what was it called? The 
Uh, in, in uh, what, a, abominable wedding? Bride. Abominable Bride. Yeah, so the abom- <laughs> yeah. I was thinking <laughs> well, Black Mirror still. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, but The Abominable Bride yeah. uh, released in theatres also in the UK. Oh, did it? Yeah, it did. Oh, nice. And so, it was a television show or a television series that went on to theatres. So, I think if Game of Thrones, I think it's very possible that the mm-hmm. last episode or the or the last finale of Game of Thrones, yeah, whatever yeah. it does happen, will be like, a, I'm sure they could oh, accommodate sure, a theatrical release. And it's bound to happen that like once the show is done, give it a couple of years, maybe like, Three or four, maybe even five at most, and then they're gonna make a movie. Make Six a movie about movie. the prequels, or like, uh, you know, the story bef- up until Ned Stark. Yeah, you know, things like that. All uh, these things. Like, like, like what Community so used to say: six so seasons and a movie. There. So mm-hmm. yeah, man, Entourage had a movie. I'm pretty sure Game of Thrones can have a movie. Okay, but coming back to what this show, this show is about, yeah. which so, is <clears throat> sex. Yeah, and so full disclosure, I was the one that was word. most. Yeah, here we go. I was. Uh, <laughs> I was most keen to. Uh, speak on this topic because uh, <laughs> there <tell>. was just <laughs> the, you I, I can never stop being amazed and stunned at how many porn parodies of science fiction and fantasy film TV comic books there are right, like, right. The, the list is it's literally endless. It endless. Is endless yes and if you if you start including anything in popular culture primarily so if you go outside of science fiction so, fantasy and yeah just Even generally more. television and movies. Then the list is genuinely endless. <laughs> um, so I, I really, I don't even know where to begin because, like, I'm looking at. So I'm gonna start. Okay, I'm gonna start here. Just well, why, why don't you not. just give us a teaser? A teaser. <laughs> Since could, this whole episode this is, is gonna be so sensual. Um, but does this episode have like a R rating? I, I don't know. If this episode makes it through the iTunes um, <laughs> uh, explicit, sensor, yeah, ex- sensor, explicit yeah. rating thingy, then I think anything can go through them. But okay, I'm going to begin. So just, just be, because. Just, be, I'm just to be choose, clear, yeah. clear uh-huh. we're talking about these. Are, you're going to be talking about porn parodies, which are yes. basically porn versions of popular franchises that exist already. In the I don't think anybody was confused as to what <laughs> porn parodies meant. But yes, that, <laughs> no, that but is what they are. When you yeah. say p- parody, it, it means you're just basically taking the plot and you and you're making it funny though so i'm saying a lot of yep. these things are comedy based also they're all comedy based yeah so there's no serious version no god no that would be <laughs> that would be a insane. fail insane there are serious and that's what i'm going to talk there about there are tons of serious big budget dramatic films that are also born yeah that don't take that don't take themselves that take themselves very seriously and okay. don't like you know fair enough have any comedic or much comedic value okay. so okay so i'm gonna begin just because why not with a man called axel braun okay who is an italian filmmaker <laughs> uh who is in the avn and xrco hall of fame avn, AVN being the adult, adult video, video network, network so yeah. that's, they're essentially like they're the, their their uh, their annual award show every January is sort of like the Oscars. Of course, of super super um, famous award ceremony. Big big uh, guy in that industry. <laughs> so, uh, just, just I'm sorry, we can do this all that. day. We can do this all day. Okay, uh, just tell me when you want me to stop. I'm gonna read off read a off list a list of, of names? his comic parodies. Okay, his and then, alone, and then okay? we're gonna take a short break and then come okay, back and talk okay. about them. Yeah? So we're gonna talk about some of these and then some by others by some other filmmakers. But okay. I'm just gonna rattle off. In no particular order, some of Axel Braun's <laughs> shining moments in uh, comic parodies. Superman vs. Spider-Man Triple X, Star Wars Triple X, Batman vs. Superman Triple X, Man of Steel Triple X, Batman Triple X, Superman Triple X, The Dark Knight Triple X, Captain America Triple X, Iron Man Triple X, She-Hulk Triple X, Spider-Man Triple X, Spider-Man Triple X 2, The Avengers Triple X, Thor Triple X, Wolverine Triple X, and X-Men Triple X. Followed- X-Men Triple X? Not oh, yeah. Triple X-Men? There is also Triple X-Men. <laughs> there is also Wolverine, which is a completely Spanish... Uh, Born. See. Um, following swiftly is his This Ain't series. So, This Ain't Avatar Triple X, This Ain't Avatar Triple X 2, This go- Ain't Beverly Hills 90210, yes, of course This Ain't this Charmed, ain't. This Ain't Cops, This Ain't Dirty Jobs. I don't know what that is. That just sounds like a regular porn. <laughs> um, this Ain't Dracula, This Ain't Game of Thrones, This Ain't Glee, This Ain't Ghostbusters, This Ain't Happy Days, This Ain't Happy Days 2, Fonzie Loves Pinky, This Ain't I Dream of Genie, This Ain't Lady Gaga, she gets her own porn party. That's pretty amazing. Uh, this Ain't Saved by the Bell, This Ain't Star Trek, This Ain't Star Trek 2, The Butterfly Effect, This Ain't Star Trek 3, This Is a Parody, This Ain't The Smurfs Triple X, This Ain't The Expendables Triple X, and This ain't Terminator Triple X. Wow. And I'm just scratching the surface of this guy. You know, it's so funny. This guy's entire branding was like in one meeting. I can imagine this board of directors and they were like, wait, how do we brand this? And they said, wait, I got it. 
This ain't <laughs> followed yep. by the title of the show. It's good because it's clear. <laughs> because I guess if you're looking for porn, you want to know yeah, exactly what you're getting. And you you want to be simple, easy to find, and you don't be, Exactly. He's got the SEO engine thing worked out perfectly. Perfectly. And you, you may not avatar, even know whether you know, you a, a porn parody exists. But if you merely type this ain't and yeah. the porn parody or the, yeah. the name of it, you uh, the odds are you probably find something. And this is just one guy, man. Like this is nuts. Axel, bro. Oh, no? so many crazy guy. I'm gonna rattle off just one. One more list before we take a Go break, it, and then yeah. we'll get into the meat of the matter. <laughs> yeah, right. Like I said, all day. Um, so there's another uh, company. So Axel Braun, I believe, like see, he's his own. Um, he's you know he's a director, so he's worked with a bunch of different companies. Uh, he has his own Axel Braun Productions. He's worked with Wicked, which is another big one. Vivid, another big one, and New Sensations. Uh, New Sensations. Oh, Wicked was the one we just the, we were just watching before, <laughs> and I mean we, this as research, guys. <laughs> before we started recording this episode, the one with the Men in Black parody. Men in Black, yeah, yes. that was Wicked. Okay, that was cool. Wicked. And, and it was Wicked as well. <laughs> that was that was by a one Brad Armstrong, who has an equally uh, extensive extensive list. Uh, <laughs> uh, but so the New Sensations company. On their on their website, um, along with having just a, a separate DVDs section of all their DVDs that they made, right. they have a separate section for parodies uh, because they, it, you know, made that many of them. Sure. So their list includes Anchorman, a triple X parody, Scooby Doo, a triple X parody, The Flintstones, oh, a triple X parody, Sex in the City, a triple X parody, Seinfeld Part Two, a triple X parody, The Breakfast Club. The Golden Girls, Reno 911, The Big Lebowski, The Big Bang Theory, True well, Blood, Who's Big the Big Bang Boss? Theory. I love it when you don't have to change the title of the show at all. <laughs> <laughs> the Office, The Office 2, Cheers, uh, WKRP in Cincinnati, Entourage, That 70s Show, 30 Rock, Friends. My God, is it just me? Scrubs. Or, or suddenly, if you just say the titles of these shows without anything, they'd still just sound like one right. Entourage, I mean, oh my gosh, yeah. Sex and the guy, City, sure. So, basically, I it, see. This, this, we, could, we could dedicate an entire podcast to just talk about porn parody maybe we should not even one episode we, should, we could just make a oh, fruit separate podcast to, you know evil twin a, sister a subsidiary uh, that just talks about porn wow parody. that's so crazy good. man okay so that's okay so the, clearly mm. there are lots of porn parodies we're gonna talk about the story value of all of them okay we're gonna dissect it like how we yeah, dissect a regular yeah, show right yeah, yeah. okay so we're gonna do that and then I'm gonna I'm gonna take you on a journey man alright so basically you're saying that these are porn parodies right? mm-hmm. they're, they're, they're funny and they're comedic because mm-hmm. I don't know if you can take them very seriously yeah. but what people do take seriously when they're trying to make uh, 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 you know the spawn version of them is erotic fan fiction yep. okay which is what I'm going to talk about it's kind of like the difference between saying I read comic books and I read graphic novels Fair I, enough. it's like I watch porn parodies well I watch erotic fan fiction so, yeah, I'm yeah. more I'm the thinking man so, so, uh, no but er- erotic fan fiction in this case is, is all text based and, and it's all like it's all uh, and I'll go as far as to say it's real literature because some of the writing is really good and I'm going sure. to tell you all about that so we're going to take a short break and we're going to come back and talk about porn. that and more you can listen to Cyrus Says from our apps on iOS, Android or our website cyrussays.in you can also listen to services like iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn SoundCloud or your favorite podcasting softwares it's cyrussays.in Cool, we're back with the Geek Food Podcast on a very, very special episode. <laughs> because I'm just blushing. We're nervous. And nervous and awkward. We're talking about porn, man. And we're talking about erotic fiction. Fan fiction. Mm-hmm. Fan fiction. Specifically fan fiction. And yes, this is why we should talk about it. It's because growing up as nerds, you're a lonely guy. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to find some semblance as to oh why we're God. doing this, right? It's because and there's no there's no shame or embarrassment in saying that everybody watches porn. So yeah. yeah. But nerds watch even more nerdy versions of porn. Nerds can this is something there's another layer in watching a porn parody that if you yeah. if you really know Game of Thrones really well and you love Game of Thrones and you yeah. when you put on the Game of Thrones porn parody, there'll be so many references in that thing that of you course. that not only will make you chuckle, but you will genuinely be impressed by the level of detail. Detail, exactly and time and energy and money that they've put into recreating this universe and putting a different spin on it I mean it obviously has the an sexual erotic, spin an, yeah. an erotic spin but still like somebody had to sit there and like recreate the a Dothraki tent and you know get all the wardrobe required to do that I agree HBO spends millions sh- on it these guys the will spend a thousand dollars on it but still make it look pretty damn good I mean it's not gonna be you know Oscar winning or Emmy award winning <laughs> stuff 
but it will be AVN Awards. Yeah. And, stuff, and, and that's it, what and matters it, to them. And it will win AVN Awards. <laughs> and it did. Wow. <laughs> yeah. No, but the other thing is that, you know, you know that the people who are making these things are nerds also. Yes. I remember reading, I mean, uh, I mean, there's, I mean, obviously, I've read a lot more <laughs> of like erotic fan fiction than I'd like to admit. And it's really awesome because you know these guys know exactly what they're talking about. So, I remember so what have you read? What's your, so, your favourite? Uh, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about a couple of them. Right now, just for the purpose of this example, I'm going to use Star Wars, obviously. Sure. And this is before, this is pre-Force Awakens. <laughs> so right. That title is just something else for me. Digital Playground just released The Force, Force Rising. Rising. Yes. yes, I saw it. Yeah. I mean, not the, mm. I just saw the, mm. I saw the ad. Mm. You know, the, the <laughs> GIF ads that they have. <laughs> I saw that one, all right? Though, I so, don't know what scene that was. I saw the, I saw the, the, it's a, it, I mean, the trailer. I'm sure, I was like, that's all, not a Aren't thing. they all paid for, like, things? Like, you have huh? to pay to watch these films. Yeah. yeah? But no, I mean, I saw the, the trailer oh, okay, for uh, it. Yeah. The, the, oh, the, the trailer for it, yeah. The scene that it's recreating, it's just one, it's a one, it's a one scene, half an hour thing. It's not a movie. It's not, yeah, but, so, so it's not, called The Force Rising and it's about this, and it's this girl who looks like... Like a Twi'lek. Yes. Yeah, I saw yes, it. With, with, with the, with yeah, the ponytail, the, yeah, yeah, the double the ponytail yeah, thing. Yeah. And so it had nothing to do with The Force Awakens. <laughs> they just jumped on the bandwagon of, hey, everyone, everybody loves Star Wars, so let's give so something people So this is what I can, read, is that know, apparently this movie, uh, I don't know if it's this movie particularly Force Rising, or mm-hmm. I remember reading about some of this, that there is a Star Wars... Uh, porn version of it was released on the day yeah. Force Awakens released. Yes. Was it this one? Yes. Oh, this is it. it. Was this one. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. Yeah, all, right. Yeah. all right. All right. So well, I will. I will definitely okay, come we'll on Digital Playground season. later. They're very right. big about these kind of things. So, uh, so yeah. So I was telling you about how I, you know, so I was reading this one, and mm. I, and and this is before Force Awakens, and this was okay. talking about. Uh, you know, stuff characters which are there in the expanded universe, okay? Like oh, Jason wow. and Jenna Solo, which is like the basically kids of <laughs> Han Solo and Leia. And like, it was a porn, it was like a erotic, like fan fiction of these two okay, characters. Hang on, hang on. Yeah. Was it, was it literature? It's, when I say, okay, so now. Were there pictures of what I'm asking? No, no, no. Was it just it's literature. It's literature. Just literature. I, this All is text. what I do. I read. Okay. okay? So, so I read a lot. And, and is this something you'd buy at like a bookstore? No, so I, I'm going to go through how the system of adult erotica goes about on oh the on the internet God. so I, 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 so anyway so just want to clear like yeah, just finish this yeah, example yeah. these guys knew points about like which are there in the expanded universe mm-hmm. okay which stuff which is I've not finished okay yeah. they were talking about the, them they were talking about uh, General Thrawn who's a major villain in the expanded universe who becomes basically the main bad guy in like the expanded universe post Return of the Jedi and it was like all erotic version of that and like I was like oh my god obviously these guys are expanded universe nerds and that means they're like hardcore Star Wars fans and they know exactly what they're talking about and, and I was just like wow it's just dumbfounded was by it, first of all was it handled comedically at all? no it's so er- 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 fan fiction is like super serious and it's okay. really committed to the art of writing mm-hmm. so and I just want to start and, sure. uh, by saying uh, so Fifty Shades of Grey yeah okay it was like it started off as a Twilight erotic fan fiction and that's what, and basically, uh, what her name, what's her name? E.L. J- James, no, I guess. No idea. Okay, so basically, no she uh, had, she was just like, a, <laughs> like just like a really horny woman, <laughs> which is wrote erotic, like, I mean, she wrote erotic fan fiction about, uh, about Bella and Edward Cullen. Mm-hmm. And she wrote about them, and it was supposed to be like a, a spin-off kind of thing of Twilight. And basically, she put it up on her website, and she would put it up as a blog, kind of like what the Martian did, like you know, a blog after blog. And people became such big fans of that, and that's really how she decided. And I think she was not getting sued, but basically, there was a because it was becoming so big, she decided to take ownership of the of the characters, and so she took it all down, and then she reposted it as an original story, and that became. Uh, Fifty, 50 Shades. Shades of Grey hmm. And like basically And it went from Being an e-book To going on to Amazon Wait, so To on. going I, into I, print I've, I've never even like Read a, a single <coughs> sentence From Fifty Shades I haven't even seen The trailer Have you not seen the movie no, dude? I've not seen the, the movie I haven't even seen The trailer. worst movie wait, Of so, all time uh, You said it was based On Twilight So are the characters called Edward no, they and Bella? So basically, were they ever called Edward? And yeah, Bella? they were. Okay, so, they she were. Just, so she changed names and everything. And once. she repurposed the novel. Basically, it was set okay. in a different thing. Then sure. she kind of. So basically, it molded itself so, further so was and further. That, was that like the publisher saying you can't no, make a parody of this thing? No, it's not, it was not a publisher thing. It's just basically she got so much traction on their website. Hmm. She's like, wow, I can really do something with this. She got so much traffic that she's like, okay, you know what? I'm going to take all of this down. Mm-hmm. I'm going to repurpose it, rewrite it as an original story, and then so, she gave it back to her fans as an original book so, called Fifty Shades so of Grey. So, was, 
are the final beats that appear in the novel and the movie are they the same beats that were there uh, in the storyline yeah, of her I, fan fiction? I think yeah basically she just changed names and just she said changed names exact same and yeah she obviously changed the setting same. blah 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 okay. but I think the the main thing which was uh, and maybe somebody who's far more educated in this can correct me but I think the whole so the whole story of Fifty Shades of Grey is that he's in this whole BDSM guy right that's all I know yeah exactly I just know it's about BDSM yeah so that's he, literally he all I he's know. that and like basically he makes us and there's a whole the whole story revolves I know I'm not read the book I, mean, I did watch a bit of the movie before, before it became absolute trash it is trash the whole movie is trash okay. um, but uh, she is basically around a non-disclosure agreement this guy's a super rich guy kind of like Tony Stark imagine okay he's a billionaire he's the okay. Bruce Wayne yeah. except he's kinky Bruce Wayne and he's <laughs> just like here you go here's this non-disclosure agreement I'm the king of this empire you cannot disclose to anybody that I'm into this shit uh. <laughs> so please sign this and the whole thing becomes about her I think she's a virgin and he's like, oh, forget the contract. I'm just going to do you now. And then he's just like, before you, before you, oh, uh, uh, it was just terrible. Anyway, I, I so, can already <laughs> tell that if we, we can just edit so many lines out of this episode to make <laughs> Take so it out much, of context. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 anyway, so, so basically, on, saying. yeah, so Fifty Shades of Grey was erotic fan fiction. And right. I mean, it's, I mean, now it's just erotic fiction. And, and, and I think in the last few, maybe five years or something, erotic fiction has become such a big deal, you know? I mean, coming from, you know, the whole Mills and Boons era, Mills and Boons, you know, like all the girls and all the stuff in college used to read Mills and Boons and then I used to steal it and then read it out loud just for fun. Uh, but I've, Yeah, I've definitely, yeah, like, I've definitely like sat around my friends and like read out. Exactly. Actually, you know, it was, it was actually Fifty Shades of Grey. I oh, remember yeah? I, was, I was in college um, and just happened upon a group of people reading, <laughs> reading out something absurd. As you do, yeah. And just because you were reading it so casually out loud. And well, yeah, I think it was Fifty Shades of Grey. Because yeah. that's... And Jishnu, Hello. I'm going to do one one step further. I am going to read out an Please excerpt from, from some uh, adult fan fiction. Obviously, I'm going to keep okay. it uh, SF dub. Um, yeah. Okay. Like, yeah. Please uh, paint the scene. Uh, I'm so going to shut my eyes. <laughs> okay, wait, hold on. Uh, I, I don't Get know, me in the mood. What, is your, the mood, what is your choice of... <laughs> what? <laughs> what is your... Uh, uh, flavor of, oh God, Okay, turn off the lights Dim the lights And then read Okay, so I'm going to tell you How prescient these guys are Okay, okay. So, uh, anyway Coming from Fifty Shades of Grey uh, I started to do A little more research on this Because I remember reading A, a bit And this will interest you Okay, so you know Harry Potter was such a big deal In school For all of us Before, mm. I mean That was when it was on So everybody yeah, yeah, was into yeah. it So, I mean As a young, nerdy Horny kid <laughs> I found Some erotic fan fiction Of Harry Potter And now here's the coolest thing Alright Okay Here's the most important thing, right? This was before the last two books were released. So this was after, around uh, or Phoenix. Order of the Phoenix, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's when I read this story, and this was a a humongous tale of 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 Harry Potter and humongous tales and humongous tales, and it <laughs> it was uh, it was the same uh, like oh god, this is terrible to say. It was the same size <laughs> as the original novel. <laughs> Like it was basically Like it was as lengthy As the original novel Like it was so long <laughs> This show is just Degregated <laughs> into Savagery <laughs> But anyway, so I'm just going to cut to it. So yeah. I started reading it. And it, it's basically about how, you know, Harry, it's the same Harry Potter story. He's yeah. just invented a new one. Yeah. But there's sex in it. And there's a lot of sex. And basically, he is subverted. So the, are you going to read out an, an excerpt from no, that? No, I'm not going to read out. But I'm going to tell you an interesting fact about it. Okay. Is that, uh, so basically, Harry and Hermione become a, a thing in that. I think sure. it's basically what everybody wanted. Yeah. But it didn't happen. So yeah. anyway, so they become a thing. And and here's the, here's the thing. And uh, the story revolves around how Harry, to defeat Wo- Voldemort, has to become an animagus alright so ah. he becomes a griffin okay Okay, and it was a really cool part of the story and I read okay. it for that reason also obviously <laughs> sure, sure that's why right because you want to know oh, yeah. about the griffin thing <laughs> no but here's you the picked thing. up the cover and went here's, hmm. okay here's the thing that's a theory here's the thing I just know you will, you will appreciate this okay. yes. in this book yeah. this is before 6 and 7 came out yeah. he says oh Harry why you're so tied to Voldemort is because of a prophecy mm-hmm. that you guys are destined to fight each other and kill each other off or something like that. And I was thinking about it and I was like, oh, cool prophecy, blah, blah, blah. And then I remember, and then I left the story, blah, blah, blah. And then a few years later, the sixth book came out and the seventh book came out and it was all about this prophecy. Right. And then I realized that this guy Predicted. guessed the entire plot, man. He was so good. He was so amazing. And I was just like, wow, apart from the amazing sex scenes that you wrote, you are a good writer, sir. And that's basically what I, that was the interesting fact. So okay. yeah, man, not all that. So do you have <laughs> I know, an excerpt? Okay. I have me? an excerpt from something. You have to use this uh, from something more relevant, and this is how okay. updated erotic fan fiction writers come on, come on, are. Come on, hit me. Hit okay, me. 
It's a, it's a Marvel cinematic universe erotic fan fiction on civil war. Okay. okay. And it's basically about how <laughs> Clint Barton. Yeah. Okay. Basically he bursts into this room with, you know, a, a hotel room if you will, with his bow and arrow. <laughs> Again, act, the actual bow sure, and arrow. Sure. Just yeah. and like he, he he enters and basically he's like looking around and he's like, "Hmm, I knew she would find me here." Blah 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 blah. And then suddenly Natasha Romanov enters the room and then they passionately start embracing each other while discussing the feud between Tony Stark and Steve Rogers and basically in the throes of passion they discuss the 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 terms of the civil war and that is happening and it was just fantastic man and and even in the middle he had, she says what about your wife because now we know Hawkeye oh, yeah. yeah is married mm-hmm. and we didn't know that in the first movie and he says ah that bitch doesn't know anything about <laughs> this and I was just like wow please is that a direct quote that bitch yes, uh, about, yeah, well this. yes the word uh, the word that bitch is de- i mean the words that yes. is definitely there <laughs> yeah and it was crazy good man that was really good it was well, good that I'm glad it makes you happy it was on the, it's on this website called archive of our own and it's basically it was started by people um who couldn't find like forums to put up their original without being tagged as explicit or being censored and stuff like on the uh, internet can you believe it and hmm. so and this thing has like a hundred like basically i was trying to find the so- story civil war 2975 stories on Man. that like the wow. first civil war doctor strange civil war again civil war internal battles oh my god it's crazy <laughs> okay well i i'm glad that pleases you so um <laughs> i'm going to i want to get back to uh the world of film of these parodies and in particular to go back to star wars as we were talking about yep um so axel brown like i said did uh the star wars parody right now the star wars parody is much like all these other comic book ones that we're talking about that are so specific in their detail that you can clearly tell was made by a bunch of nerds like this one is no exception so the star wars parody was you know made on like a million this like, is you're talking about force rising no 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 this the, is uh, star wars a new hope oh otherwise known as star wars a new hole <laughs> um <laughs> if you just watch the trailer alone oh so uh Yeah. Public service announcement all these movies have safe for work trailers which are hilarious and yeah. they know exactly how hilarious they are because being safe for work there's nothing explicit in them so Except it's, it's just all the, it's yeah it's all alluding to stuff so it's all uh, it's like you know 2 3 minute trailers which is about 20 to 30% of all the dialogue in these movies right. is al- is already given away in this trailer right um so this particular movie they had a solid CGI uh budget The visual effects work was actually pretty damn good. They had a uh they created a digital, you know, star destroyer, they had the death star, they wow. made a digital 3PO who was like a really sassy gay man, like <laughs> a really of course offensive, you know, like oh my god, what like, are you talking about? Like super that, fl- that was his oh, voice. Like, Fla- like not was, flamboyant. Fla- Yeah, just like a sassy like, guy. Just sassy and annoying and <laughs> like that guy. So that was what 3PO was, which I guess is kind of accurate because 3PO has always been like, you know, third wheel to Han and Leia uh, and he's no different in his role in this one. Yeah. Um, Darth Vader, somehow appropriately when he comes to interrogate Leia who's held captive in the prison with his um, interrogation Curse. droid. Curse. She like, he, he uh, brings out the interrogation droid, it's got the big needle, she's like, okay, no, I'll, t- I'll tell you what you need and then he's like, great, I need you to suck it. <laughs> and he's played by a guy, Lex, uh, Lexington Steel, I think his name is, Lex, Lex something. And, uh, um, like Remington Steel? Like Remington Steel. <laughs> um, and of course, Darth Vader being a giant six foot six or whatever he is, has equally a- well equipped. <laughs> and it's, it's just, oh my God. Uh, the Wookiee, they, they have a proper Wookiee costume. These are all euphemisms. <laughs> When you a, say Wookiee, I yeah, don't know what you're talking no, about I mean anymore. The Wookie, I mean the Wookiee. Uh, Chewbacca. Chewbacca yeah. um, has, has a scene with two stormtroopers. Um, what? Yeah, because it's it's a scene where you know TK four two one. Why aren't you at your post? Oh, okay. and then they're like sort of have a you know. Uh, because I'm at his post. <laughs> There you go. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so it's okay. it's it's brilliant. So oh man, excellent. The big thing I really want to get to the reason I bring up Axel Brown is because he is trying a new sort of 
Bi- <laughs> pioneering initiative, shall I? Call oh man, it? yeah, I mean, I Which I am one. very yeah. uh, curious to see how this plays out. Actually, I think I can predict at this point because of how long it's been. What I'm getting at is the first movie, Star Wars Triple X, uh, was a big, big success. Um, of course it was. Of course nothing, it was. Nothing that has Star Wars, yeah. like, yeah. I mean, because, I mean it can it was, be a failure. Yeah. I, I, I cannot stress how impressive. The details. Have you in seen? This movie. Have you seen? You saw the whole movie. I've seen the movie. Okay, cool, cool. Because I was just genuinely no, no, so course. friggin' curious, like yes. how, like the trailer is just very <laughs> impressive. Anyway, so, <laughs> okay, 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 all right. <laughs> oh, this rabbit hole. Yes, this hole of a rabbit. This uh, um, Star Wars a new hole. So, he is now um, coming out with the Empire Strikes Back. Of the yeah, Black, oh right? gosh, of course he is. So, going to. people have been dying for this movie to come out because I think Star Wars came out. Several years ago. I yeah, yeah. How when, old is this film? Um, geez, how do I figure this out? It's it at least a couple years, at least maybe two or three, if not four. So, Empire Strikes Back is ready to happen, right. but they want to go bigger and better. Now, they obviously, do. the big thing about porn is that people illegally download it all over the place because you have things like Pornhub and all these other bazillion of you know Pornhub, free, the, free the, porn Netflix of porn. <laughs> the Netflix of porn, the Netflix of porn, the Netflix of porn. Yes. Um, so, getting the budget. To make like a multi-million dollar production is right. impossibly difficult, even for this guy. Uh, so there's an Indiegogo campaign <laughs> where they're trying to raise. Is this also this is Axel Braun's Indiegogo? This is Axel Braun's okay, Indiegogo cool, campaign. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So I have his thing opened up. <laughs> I'm sure oy, you do. Oy, oy. You have his thing opened up. I have, go, go, tell me. I have the website opened up for the Indiegogo campaign, and they're trying to raise five hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> they're trying right? to raise. Five. And their tagline is "Help fund the greatest porn parody ever made," and it will be free to download for forever. So, I'm just going to read out really quick his little blurb uh, of an explanation. He basically says that he wants to put together a fundraising campaign. And he's got his team, his his cast and his crew ready, and he's advertised, you know, which are the right, uh, the right, porn right. stars that are on it and everything. The rewards, friend. Tell the, me those. <laughs> okay, final, final. Just skip the rewards because we all know that's really what we're getting at. So <laughs> okay. I'll put you this way: five hundred thousand dollars. They have a month left. It's been twenty two days. They've raised three <laughs> percent. So what's the total budget again? Five hundred thousand. Okay, cool. Uh, they've raised fourteen thousand six hundred and thirty seven as of today. Okay. Now, I'll just give you some of the, the better uh, rewards that they have on their list. So, for uh, 25 US dollars, <laughs> it's time to party. You will receive an invitation to the exclusive movie premiere so you can meet the cast and ah. get plastered with Vader and, with Vader and Leia. Safe. For $75. Okay. Always thought Bond movies were so dumb that they didn't have a script. Ha! You'll get a beautiful coil-bound screenplay autographed by the cast. Sit on your favorite chair, grab a glass of brandy, and read away in broad daylight. <laughs> Nobody will know it's porn because, you know, porn doesn't have scripts. Um, for $100, a personalized video message from a member of the cast of your choice. Nice. Choose wisely, my friend. $500, uh, limited... That's only $500. That's not bad No, 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 that was $100. Oh, that's not bad at yeah. all. Yeah. Uh, for $500, you can get... A limited edition Blu-ray. We will make a limited edition collector's edition of 500 Blu-ray, Blu-ray discs featuring the movie in glory. High oh death, my gosh! Plus exclusive behind-the-scenes footage, bloopers, and the killer packaging. Blah blah blah. Okay. Okay, <laughs> of that's course, actually of course there's a killer packaging. That's, that's actually not that exciting. Uh, for 1500, you can get Chewbacca's costume. Oh, thank God for he 2000, said costume. For 2000, you can get a walk-on role. For 2500, you can get a date with Le- with Leia. Oh, nice. Uh, do the uh, to the premiere, premiere and sit in the VIP section. For three thousand dollars, <laughs> you can fly to Alaska to be in the hot scene Whoa. with them. For five thousand dollars, you can get a speaking role. For ten thousand dollars, because that's what you want in a porn film. For for ten thousand dollars, you can be on the poster. For twenty thousand dollars, you can get dinner with the cast and director. For fifty thousand dollars, which is the whole production budget, uh, you can get an exclusive, sorry, an executive producer credit. Nice. So, so this is not the first time a uh, a. Uh, 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 a porn movie is being like, f- like campaigned for in Indiegogo, and just pulled one up. This yeah. is gonna is gonna blow your mind because okay. it's also science and geeky based. Yeah, the Pornhub space program sexploration. This is gonna <laughs> help us make the first sex tape in space. I oh, swear, wow. this is a real thing that just happened. It's closed because they needed three billion four hundred thousand dollars. Billion with a B. With a B. B for buttocks. B for blowed. <laughs> <Good job. laughs> wow. 
<laughs> which is what uh, I mean I mean it failed to happen they yeah. only raised 236,000 and I won't go through all the rewards but let me just put it this way $1 was Pluto $10 was Moonrock $20 was Asteroid and of course $150,000 was Uranus <laughs> 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 but yeah, it was crazy. So if you donated Uranus, this top level donation scores you one of the two spacesuits worn by our sextronauts, complete with underwear, plus a swag bag. Great for cosplay enthusiasts. There you go. Oh That's the tie in for us. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. Though I think as nerds, we need to fund uh, uh, the Empire Strikes Back. At least get, we should get a we should get a personalized message, right? I, I think, think we should, we should get, geek food. Should, exactly, get a yeah. personalized. Wait, let me see how many are left. Five hundred dollars. Do we d- have five hundred dollars? Okay. I have I have bad news for you, man. Okay, hit the me. The date with Leia is sold because oh, there was shite. only one and it sold out. Um, but let me take a look. What, at what, what, the... what, what can we reasonably? <laughs> oh, only five out of a hundred personalized video messages are claimed. So we can we can literally get ninety five geek food like, messages for retweet. Each. Retweetable, yeah. Instagrammable we can messages, just, yeah. just like follow Geek Food. We can ask it, send one to Dinkar, send one to the Vijeta, send one to the Bashab, you, me. It's all done. Ooh. Amit, Bagish, <laughs> the whole team. Everyone. Everybody everyone from it. IBM Podcasts. You heard here first. You IBM Podcasts is funding <laughs> the Star Wars <laughs> Empire Strikes Back on parody. Wow. If only, there was a, if only there was a podcast that just dealt with this kind of stuff only. Oh, man. <laughs> We're so fired. Um, okay. Oh, so my gosh. The. Other big, I guess actually maybe actually, even the first big budget porn parody movie, but the, it's not technically a parody of a specific movie mm-hmm. uh, that most people would have heard of. If there's any porn uh, big budget movie you've heard of, is the Pirates movie. Right, so, of course. Everyone has heard of this. Everyone in, knows about it. Everyone's seen it so pretty this much. this is with Digital Playground. And actually, I'm going to, a quick aside, I have to mention the story. So uh, my senior year of college, yeah. I was in an entrepreneurship class. Oh, thank God. And it was... <laughs> <laughs> it, it gets better, trust me. So, s- final semester of college, uh, it was me and four or five of my friends. We were all seniors, and we were we had finished with all of our main uh, core classes that we needed to take for our major. So it was like the last semester where we basically took like easy classes just to, like to have a big blowout for the last end of our college career. Right. In an entrepreneurship class. Oh, this is and the one where you went to Cancun. No, you no, 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 no. That that was that was just spring break. I went. Oh, okay. Was that was break. that was a different thing. All right. Um, this one, it was an entrepreneurship class, and the assignment was we had to get in a group, all all of us, the four or five of us, and we had to present uh, our explanation of what we thought any company of our choosing's business model was. Right. If that makes sense. So pick a pick a company, basically do a case study. Yeah. On any pre-existing company, and so people chose you know X, Y, and Z, you know whoever they wanted, you know. Good companies, big companies, small companies of all shapes and sizes. So we really didn't care. Like we were basically seniors who were knee deep in senioritis, and we really didn't care because <laughs> this class didn't matter for our grades anymore, sure. really, or didn't matter as much. Um, so we picked Digital Playground, <laughs> which is the company that has done things like Pirates, yeah. Pirates Two, Pirates Two. There's Pirates Two. Even I'll, I'll, I'll get to that. Okay. Eight million dollars as compared to one million dollars for Pirates One. What, wait, you're talking about the budget? The budget. Yeah. Oh my god. They did the Force Rising. Oh, same guys, right? Same. They did Top Guns. Top Guns, which is just Great incredible. Name. Uh, they did X Files porn parody, which came out. About the triple X Files. Yeah, like no, just just called X Files. Uh, well, yeah, it's, they're, they're not it's creative easy. with their names. <laughs> um, <laughs> so a whole bunch, and uh, so with this particular uh, class assignment, so we picked Digital Playground because we just really didn't care. So we got up in front of a class for like a good ten to fifteen minutes, and pulled up their website wow. to a room full of like. Draws dropping on the floor. Jaws dropping. Draws yeah. dropping. Jaws draws dropping. and jaws. Jaws and draws dropping on the floor. Um, and we broke down their business model. And the funny thing about it, we actually got a B. Because they are a legitimate company. Yeah, they are they legitimate They have million company. dollar yeah, budgets. Yeah, yeah, they actually sure. have real stuff to manage. They have merchandise. And you know what? They have I've noticed also. Brand ambassadors. Dude, they have, you know, production social value, media. Man. Yeah. Production value is so sick. Like, it's like really we, good. We, we, we we approached it initially because we were like, wow, this is going to be hilarious. We're going to take you know take the piss out of this and the professor's going to hate us, but what does it matter because we're graduating? Yeah. But once we were done with the assignment, we realized... Like, wow, we have become we, better for we this. We actually <laughs> had to dissect... This is a real company. Yeah. Yes, there are naked people in it, but it's a real thing. Yeah, 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 sure. So anyway... No, that's really interesting, um, man. Like, I, I know, and this is my... This has been my problem with... 
I mean, well, this is the main problem that everyone, I mean, at least people like us don't like about porn is that the stories are so bad and they don't put like, that's the, that's the real thing, right? Yeah, the sex, sure. But like, it has to lead up to that and all the stories in porn are terrible. But Digital Playground, Playground actually does a good job. They, they put a lot of time effort, and effort into, into it. Yeah, they, they really actually do. have a script. <laughs> so, so the porn, uh, so the, the Pirates porn, uh, first one that came out in 2005, <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Um, wow, was, 2005? Yeah. Had a, so it's eleven years ago. Damn, my gosh! So it was on a one million dollar budget, and it was loosely, it was basically a parody of it was Pirates loosely of the Caribbean. Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, in that I mean, there was nobody that was like you know Jack Sparrow again. Like yeah, but like it, was, it was the flavor of the year at that time. Exactly, like, yeah. it was a big thing, and yeah. so it did you know it did very 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 well. So Pirates Two: Stagnetti's Revenge. <laughs> what? It continued the storyline. The the antagonist was called Stagnetti, and then you know the the plump breasted uh, protagonists all had to fight against Stagnetti uh, and defeat him, and so okay. they did. And um, but uh, actually, I believe after they defeated him at the end of the first one, they got in bed together. So I kind of think that kind of like went against the whole plot idea, you know? Oh wow! But like, I'm gonna kill you. But, uh, right after I have sex with you. Oh, okay, um, cool. Nice. So in part two, Stagnetti's Revenge, they went for eight million. Which, so if you think about it, this um, Empire Strikes Back, right. five hundred thousand dollars is not all. a lot to ask. Yeah. However, it's kind of, it's like a little bit disappointing that they can only raise. You know, they're not. They haven't even hit they fifteen thousand yet. They, oh, they, they have. They have a How month many days left. left? Oh, they have a month. They have a month left. It's okay. been three weeks. They've only made fifteen thousand. Ooh, that's a shame. We need so, to do something about that. I'm telling you. <laughs> IBM Podcast is going to fund the Empire Strikes Back. No. Like, oh, Jesus. Well, you can still say that in a sentence. It sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. I actually really wanted to read out some of these. So, I, I, I couldn't read out the, the last one. Uh, but I really... Because since we were talking about Star Wars, I wanted to just read out... Okay, so, you know, basically you can pick a story and they have... Like how we have on our website, we have little excerpts as to what our episode is about. Mm-hmm. Similarly. Yeah. So, I'm going to talk about... I'm just going to read out some of the... Uh, this is from... Adultfanfiction.org Okay Okay. A really really Solid website For finding And they separate it Based on fandoms Mm -hmm. So you can find Exactly what you're looking for And Star Wars Obviously is a big Contributor to that (laughs) At least the people Who write these stories are Okay Here we go Interrogation By Grady V Kylo Ren Interrogates Rey Dot 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 Unconventionally (laughs) Unconventionally Unconventionally Kylo Ren and Rey Romance Okay That's it And then (laughs) That's it Okay, cool. Oh, oh my god, this is even... Oh, I can't read this out. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Sorry, I can't... I, I just... Okay. Uh, again, these are all interrogation-based. Happy to help. By Topaz slash Per Love. A fellow salvager from Jakku is brought in by the First Order for questioning about Ray. She is no help in that department. <laughs> See, you know, here's, here's one thing I really love. You, we, we touched on this a little bit ago. You mentioned that Star Wars was released. Uh, Force Rising was released on the same day, day as, as yeah, this one. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know why I'm just talking about Axel Braun a lot because he's done so much. But <laughs> he's, just he's a, done another one, yeah. Batman vs. Superman. Oh, yeah? The same day as... Um, it, as the actual movie. Oh, no, 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 no. It, it released on the same day as another DC one. Which was the last DC one that came out? Um, Man um, of Steel. Was a Man of Steel? Yeah. Maybe it was Man of Steel. I forget. Do you think these guys are uh, like strangely but, clairvoyant as to the plots and stuff like that? Like, you know no, what I was talking about? No, no, no. So there, okay, that I can tell you for certain. So I, I saw the trailer <laughs> for, there's so many Batman parodies, it's ridiculous. Yeah, of like, course it's, it's Batman. It's ludicrous how many there are. Yeah. Um, and so those ones, the one I saw for Batman vs. Superman involved Poison Ivy and Wonder Woman in a completely different capacity. <laughs> of course. And just a whole bunch of other characters that had nothing to do with anything. The Avengers ones, yeah. actually, uh, of which... I believe there are at least two in a in a sequence in like a series that are out. Include all Avengers that haven't even been introduced in the MCU to begin with, right? Like Captain Marvel, oh, Miss nice. Marvel. Oh, so they're going for it. They're going for it. I mean, yeah. and and like they go with they go with a lot of the old school comic book costumes, costumes yeah, because yeah. they're not appealing to people that are just getting into this. They're, they're appealing nerds. to the nerds that's who like know who the know back all lore. This stuff. That's so true. Yeah, it's like they have all these references to the comic books themselves as opposed to the movies, but they'll release them on the same day right. as when the big movie is dropping, so that there's buzz around. <laughs> comic books so if you google Batman vs. Superman the yep. movie odds are you're gonna find you this you will probably party. scroll down a little bit and you'll find this other one fair enough um, unless your search filters are on Safe. unless your search filters yeah. are on yeah and it's so funny I mean, um, it was a, uh, the one thing I saw which was so funny to ch- the, how they changed the plot I remember watching a Walking Dead um, zombie uh, what do you call it porn 
porno. Okay, mm-hmm. and it was like it was basically the Walking Dead, and they followed the comic book storyline. Oh yeah, rather than the yeah. then well, well, obviously the one thing that they they, they <laughs> the plot line is basically he's like, oh my god, they're gonna bite us. What do we do? He's like, oh, the only way to get rid of them. So in the movie, you have to oh, do the double jump. Right? Oh my god, you have, to, you have to shoot them in the head, right? <laughs> but this is like the only way we can stop them oh, is if we have no. sex with them. And I was and like, do you have to double tap? Yep, you have double team. You have to. Well, no, I don't know about double team, but basically you have to like. Will you have to? You have to. <laughs> oh, I don't know Jesus. how we can say this, but yeah, uh, yeah basically, yeah. you know what? You know what? What we're. I mean, let's leave something to the imagination. Yeah. Okay. But ultimately, this is a podcast. People are only hearing this. Right. So, that's fine. so yeah. I, I think on a closing note for this topic, I, I want to make one. I have one recommendation. Let me know if you have any. But mm-hmm. I would recommend probably the most amusing trailer to see. Um, I haven't. I haven't gone so far as to see the actual film, but the trailer alone is just brilliant. Um, <laughs> look up. Wolverine. Wolverine, yes. So the Wolverine, V U L V A R I N E. Um, it's entirely. It's not Spanish. It's Italian or something. It's 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 some uh, Mediterranean <laughs> language. I can <laughs> tell you that. Greek. Some, I don't know. I, that pretty sure it was Spanish. But yeah, it's like three or four minutes long, mm-hmm. and I think it might just be a trailer because like it's it's pretty. It's like the entire plot of a movie, but it's all in Spanish, and it's the guy has. Decent graphics that are kind of on you know the verge of like this comically bad to like actually some things are kind of impressive. Right. I would I would highly recommend. It's I just recommend YouTube, that? Wolverine Triple X. It's brilliant. It's safe for work. Okay. It's it's such a lot. Oh, just the tra- okay. Cool. I just the trailer. Pornos. No, no. <laughs> I preface that. No, I, 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 the I'm, trailer I'm gonna, is safe for work and it's hilarious. I'm gonna recommend reading uh, the adult fan fiction, man, because it's actually good. It's really good. Like the writing is really good. And this is this is my thing. This has always been uh, the the thing. Is that in writing? It's the the build up is so hardcore, and I mean that in every sense of the word. <laughs> is that it's so epic that once once it finally happens, you're just like, oh my god, this is exactly what I've been waiting for. So it like the writing is really really solid in 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 some of them, not like the the pandering kind of uh, Fifty Shades. I can't believe I'm saying Fifty Shades of Grey is actually terrible, and that's actual. Mm-hmm. Erotica, which is out there, uh, but yeah, man. And obviously, the other thing which I'd, uh, I mean, I, I, I ask people to just, and this is how the entire thing came about. You know what slash is? Slash. No. It's a genre of 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 porn. Uh, no, no. Well, I don't know if it's of, of porn or if it's of erotica, but it's basically slash is basically when you're saying who between which two people is the sexual act going to take place. Oh, with. okay. So basically, it would be. But now, what slash has become synonymous with, and this is hilarious. And this is why Slash is a thing. Because mm-hmm. of Spock and Kirk, uh, what do you call it? Fan fiction. Oh, Jesus. And that is such a huge thing on the internet. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, like Slash fiction is just like Spock and Kirk. And like that's, did you, did you that's see the, what um, everyone's fantasy is. Can uh, you believe it? I saw, I saw it on a lot of late night talk shows. This, you know, like mm. when, when, uh, when actors are promoting movies and go on late night shows. Right. They have, if they're not good about it, you can see that they have... Like just a small list of jokes or stories to tell you that they'll yeah. get repeated, and they sort of right. have to like cycle through them. Yeah. One joke I remember, like during the X Men uh, Days of Future Past um, press junket, when uh, McAvoy and uh, uh, the one in Conan and Fassbender. Did, yeah, he did this. He might oh, have done right, this on right, Conan. Right. Did this on Graham Norton. They might yeah, have done it on yeah, Conan. I, I know they did at least two or three. Their fan fiction, their erotic fan fiction. Yeah. People doing drawings of them. Yeah, I saw those. It was just hilarious. All of them are just so like just, embracing I, each other. Yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah. amazed at how quickly people are able to, to create to whip these up this stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's and mad. I guess it kind of makes sense because it's not too hard to come up with the story. It's just filling in the details of it. Well, also, yeah, is, is I mean, the expensive I, or time-consuming part. And it's the same thing that we what, what we keep talking about is that these are huge data, like these are huge like fan bases yeah. of nerds, people who are in like you know who are designers, who are writers, yeah. who are directors. Yeah. And for them, it's like, oh, okay, I'm just gonna you know just live out this. I'm gonna just do this as a you know fantastical yeah. kind of like I do this yeah. anyway for a living. I might as well just do it for like a. I okay. might as well just draw boobs. While yeah, I'm exactly. Yeah, yeah and they do it, and it's hilarious, man. It's really 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 funny um, our producer is saying that we have to make a notable mention of Arkham Asylum <laughs> I think we just want I think we just want to just say it we just want to say the word yeah. Asylum yeah. Yeah. so there we go Arkham yeah. Asylum okay, anyway cool. on that note we'll take a break talk about some ran- <laughs> random stuff oh really this was not the <laughs> this ran- was not this random. was the whole show was a random news generator. but no it was fine it was fine cool. we're, we're gonna talk about random and, stuff which is not porn go 
Now, if you want to listen to some brilliant indie music from all over the country, it's really simple. You can find me on Made in India. That's madeinindia.in. My name is May, and it's spelled M-A-E-D. Now, I've had some great artists on the show, including the likes of Nicole D'Souza, The Cognac Net, Last Remaining Light, Tejas Menon, The Other People, Alicia Pays, Lakshmi Bomb, Vasudha Sharma, Ankur Tavadi, and so many more. Now, if you want to subscribe, you can go to iTunes or Stitcher or your favorite podcast app, or you can find me on my website. That's madeinindia.in. That's M-A-E-D. Or on Twitter and Facebook on Made in India. Random News Generator. Cool. We're back with Random News. And... Uh... I wanted to tell you actually you saw you caught me watching this as you entered today to the stu- into the studio mm-hmm. but there's a kick ass new uh, Star Wars fan film that just came out called Darth Maul Apprentice it's a 20 minute long fan film and since we're on the topic of like fan fiction i thought this was apt to bring up but it's really well made and it's basically like these guys are huge darth maul fans the guys who made them uh made the film and they're just like you know what darth maul and this is i guess the common feeling for most star wars fans is that uh darth maul didn't get the screen time and the and the presence that he deserved in the star wars universe this is right. why they've resurrected him in things like clone wars and stuff like that and so these guys have made like a cool uh like a short film it's like about 17 minutes and it's really good man like the guy who plays Darth Maul i mean they've obviously because Darth Maul is mostly makeup it looks exactly like Darth Maul and like kind of like was like really interesting to to i think i mean there's a possibility that they could have done something with a you know a villain character and that's what mm. i was just thinking is that there's no i don't think they're making a prequel or a or a spin off in the any of these anthology films which are going to come out on on a villain and i was just like oh this is an interesting kind of approach that's to take the the we've always seen star wars from the jedi point of view right. i think it's really really interesting to 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 take it from the from the dark side and and see what they could have done there and this is what this movie does is basically a prequel to uh him becoming his full time apprentice and saying that you're ready to finally face Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan as basically about how Darth Maul is, is on this planet and he's just going through some, I mean the story value is kind of kind of low but basically it's mostly about the martial arts and is really well directed and you should watch it just like from a fan film point of view really really slick really really good and it's basically lightsaber deals which is what re- really everybody liked about that so film. so where can people find it so it's on youtube it's just uh, it's readily available the really interesting part is the is the behind the scenes stuff man i think just as to filmmakers oh. and stuff like that yeah, yeah definitely check it out quite cool it's fully documented be- fully documented yes. and nice. and really really nicely shot and dude they have some really cool like drone like they have vertical like completely aerial shots so they have left nice. put some and apparently they've taken like 2 years to make this the graphics are sick the guy who's playing Darth Maul basically is sick like he's he could easily be a standard and that's the thing you know about doing a character like Darth Maul anyone can do Darth Maul like you can always redo you don't need Ray Park anymore i i mean but for Han Solo you need Harrison Ford and yeah, you can't do it yeah. and but this one yeah definitely man like it seemed like a really cool film so it's called Darth Maul Apprentice you should definitely check it out on youtube it's like Yeah, it's not very long. It's and it's pretty cool. So yeah, man, that's my news. Nice. Well, mm. to continue down that Star Wars hole. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um so VR is getting bigger and bigger every week. Yeah. They're still finessing it, but um as of just a couple hours ago today, they released a trailer uh ILM Lab. Oh, nice. Um a released ILM? a trailer for Immersive Entertainment uh which is a game called is it a game? It's a virtual reality. It's a, okay, it's a virtual reality. It's a virtual reality experience. experience. Of course, so I really don't know what. Th- this is what I mean by this. This uh, like testing it's, a lot of things. It's out. not interactive, probably. It's just that so. uh, is well, it interactive in the sense that you won't be able to govern the story like this. It says it's played on the HTC Vine, Vive. What's that? Oh, is so, that a phone? I guess so. So. Um, we did a, we did a bit of muddling around with the uh, like augmented real the virtual reality thing at, at Comic Con. I yeah, mean, yeah. We, just, we just put on a, it was cool. a phone, which was yeah, it was fine, but yeah. it was still very baby phase. Yeah, it. it was it was. So very, this yeah. is something called Trials of Tatooine. You can look it up. Uh, there's a video trailer for it, and so they said they're still play testing in quotes. Oh, it's like ba- ba- like so it's, beta it's a beta, it's a beta testing thing. Yeah. Um. So it apparently is just you holding a lightsaber, walking around Tatooine as 
things are exploding but, uh, around you. So you can't you can't use the lightsaber. You can't interact with the environment. No, I, I guess I guess you can a little bit if it's if it's a if it's a video game because so actually right up right before uh, Force Awakens came out, like maybe that week or just a couple of days ago, I mentioned this briefly yeah, yeah. Uh, way back then on maybe the first or second episode. Uh, there was a Google Chrome um, VR, not a VR, a, a Google Chrome. App, extension right? extension yeah, thing yeah. where uh, you could link your phone to your web browser right, link yeah. your phone to your laptop or your desktop yeah you mentioned and that this. was clunky maybe because of my no, because internet connection was slow but also just because it's generally it's a also, very if, new if it was just an tech. extension they won't like work too hard yeah. on the mechanics so that, of it that was kind of interesting because it had um, this thing where you would have your phone held up in front of you right in between your face and the screen right mm-hmm. and your phone controls the lightsaber. Oh, that's cool. So right, you yeah. with ideally with two hands you hold your phone, phone in front and, of you yeah. and you wave it around. And the accelerometer I guess does yeah. the work. Okay. And so there are guys, they're like stormtroopers that you know shooting at you so you have to block the lasers and so oh, that's that cool. kind of neat. So this I guess is sort of like a, a big step up from that that they're I trying mean, to do. That way, I mean the we uh, what is it called? We Connect? No, the K- Connect the is Xbox. Xbox no, so it's the right. Wii U, I guess. It's yeah. yeah. But they had a great Star Wars game, man. Like, which was like you basically use the Wii controller as the lightsaber, and it was really cool. You could use like force movements, and you. Mm. I mean, that was like the, I, I felt like the closest you could get to being the experience of you know actually wielding a lightsaber and doing it you know with mm-hmm. physical controls and stuff like that. But yeah, man, that's pretty cool. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't think Star Wars has been. I guess now with the actual Star Wars theme park that they're building. So what mm-hmm. is this called? Like it's called I don't know what it's called something worlds or something like Star Wars world or something but yeah I guess that would be Star the- World <laughs> <laughs> yeah no uh, okay. maybe not um, but yeah I think that's the closest I think you'll get to actually being immersive because they're actually building a whole world around it so yeah so funny enough yeah I think if you might recall last time we said we should start like telling people about what next week's episode is going to be about right well, let's do it it's about this it's about Gaming. Game stuff. But well, not mo- VR gaming but, and not Star Wars specifically. Yeah, but... Although a little bit. Uh, uh, as iPad always. gaming. But iPad gaming, yeah. Because we... So I don't know why... I don't know how this happened, but I think all five of us at Geek Fruit have iPads. All yeah. five of us have... I just... A lot of people have iPads. I mean, it's no, not, I mean, it's not... It's, it's 2016. Still, it's not I, that I, hard of a stretch. Fair, but, no, I mean, fair enough. No, I'd say that a lot of people have tablets. I don't think all... Everybody okay, has an iPad. Sure, sure. And I just, I just found it really weird that we were all also playing games at the same time. Mm-hmm. And we were always, always doing that. So, yeah. I think we're going to... So, we're going to talk about some of the things that have really been distracting us for a long time from doing actual geek food work. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. That's the next week's episode. Uh, till then, you can log on to our website where our nerd tutorial is in full swing. Um, if you have any comments or anything like that, you can just contact us at contactgeekfruit at gmail.com. Yeah. And geekfruit.in is our website. And you can find us on Facebook and social media at geekfruithq uh, to bother us about any details about things like, I don't know, what just know? Porn parodies? Porn parodies. Don't flood out. Don't spam us, please. That would, that would actually, you know what, sure, go ahead. My, my YouTube <laughs> uh, recommendations, recommendations have now gone to hell. Are ruined. I Thanks. Had, incognito, Thanks to, like, bro. Incognito. Incognito is fine for like but looking at yeah. a web browser, but then you I want to find a trailer. I'd have to go back and I had to like register, not register, like to sign, sign in. in to give my age verification. But like, it's a safe for work trailer. What do I need to verify my age for? This is true. But anyway, but does YouTube have a lot of like NSFW yeah, stuff? Of course, like all of explicit it. stuff. Of course. How else is going to get the word out that their trailer exists? Oh, daily so it's, motion. It's all there. <laughs> I don't it's know. all there. Fair enough. Yeah, okay, yeah. cool. So look it up, Wolverine. Triple X. See you guys. That trailer is just amazing. Bye, nerds. Hey, Jishnu, are you thirsty? I'm always thirsty. This has another meaning, by the way, the word. But uh, do you, I know we enjoy our beer. I'm also in- adventurous. Are you adventurous S- and you like beer? S- I'm adventurous for beer. And are you a cheap guy? <laughs> <laughs> I do this show with you. Yeah. So. so then you will definitely love Adventures of Cheap Beer with three people who get drunk doing the podcast, which is actually pretty cool. We concept. should do that. Yeah, we kind of do the opposite, which is we get we get drunk the previous night and then we do the podcast the next day. So this is in the moment they get drunk and they speak and it's a great podcast and it's done by Siddhant Mehta, Suyash Barve and Karna Gawal, the first two actually who are friends of mine from like way back. So they're really cool people and they just review these really CD joints in Bombay. So you should check them out on ivmpodcast.com. This sounds like a great time. Yes. Do it.